Hello, everybody, everybody and, and welcome, welcome to, to Atheists. Milwaukee Atheist Presents. Atheist no, Sunday we are not changing it this late in the game. <laughs> welcome to Atheist Sunday School. Your, your one-stop one shop, shop for, for everything, everything Atheist, Atheist Sunday, Sunday and School. And today we have a guest with us. Yes, we have. We have Landon Knoll. He is a real scientist, and he is a... He's actually a smart person. He's not like us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but but uh, hello from your friendly secular strong. Well, so doing well this morning, afternoon, or evening, depending upon your time zone and latitude. Well, welcome once again to our broadcast. Yes, and remember, if anyone out there wants to be on the show, that is uh, exclusively reserved for uh, $50 or more patrons. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's special guests. Or special guests. Unless you're like super famous. If you're like famous and want to come on the show, yeah, go 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 the fuck ahead. Yeah, like if Bob Dylan wants to come on the show, we're not going to stop him. Yeah. We're uh, going to be like, that's cool. Invited. So we've got the 100 points show to begin. Yes. yes. And uh, I can start us off today. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Please. What ancient egyptian word is the the word hebrew derived from huh ancient egyptian word what was that meme with uh with eddie murphy like the the thinking one what's that called ancient egyptian i was like i, I suppose it isn't hebrew itself so mm. gotta be some some now, it does kind of sound like Hebrew, like the word Hebrew. It sounds like it, which is why I derived from it. Hebrew. What? Hebrew. No. Do you have a guess, Landon? He... he <laughs> no. No. Uh, it is actually apiru. Apiru. Yeah. Apiru. Wow. And what does it mean? Well, it basically just referred to uh, a, a group of people, a specific group of people who were kind of nomadic uh, in between Canaan and the Negev. Yeah. So, fucking Hebrews. How, so, how do you spell that? Uh, it's got like a little uh, apostrophe and then A-P-I-R-U. No, no, how do you spell that in hieroglyphs? Oh, I have no fucking idea. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a Staff well, and a scarab or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, my 100 points question is on the seven string guitar in mm. standard tuning, what is the tuning of the sixth string? C. No. G. No. C. Oh, man. Uh, you had like eight possible seven, answers. Seven. Yeah, eight possible answers. Yeah. I didn't get it. Oh, well, Landon. Well, well, since it's a 100 point show, you have to have something relating to 100. <laughs> so, my question is how many prime numbers are there less than 100? I am going to go just a guess here. Uh,. 17. And your guess? I'm going to guess 23. Very close. It, the number is actually 25. Oh, uh, okay. Damn it, I wish I could play. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's a, that's a nice thing, the quarter of the numbers. But it, it, they get rarer and rarer, so enjoy the first 100. Because <laughs> so it's not just all, a flat 25% of ones. all numbers. No, no, not a flat 25 Oh, yeah. that would be, that really would be the ones divisible by four. Yes. Well, no, no, actually, it wouldn't. But, okay. Yeah, so, we, so we have somebody who's asking about the 100 points show. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. What, what is it? Explain what you get. When yeah, you it's, it's, just, it's just us vamping for some time while people see the notification. Uh, and sometimes it, it, it takes a bit for it to pop up for people. Yeah, the 100 point show part, yeah. is a time honored tradition of our congregation. <laughs> and uh, it occurs before every Bible study. 
Uh, as is tradition. As is tradition. It's not written in this book, but someday there will be a book written. Of all the 100 point shows. All the 100 points shows. Maybe after episode 100, we can publish a book of there every 100 points show oh, question yeah. and the answers to them. But there are, well, there are even those that we don't know the answers to. We'd have to look them up. We'd have to do some research because we asked some pretty obscure ones. I think there are some subjective ones too, yeah. but we can just yeah. give whatever answer we want. <laughs> yeah. and, and of course, we, if you actually win the 100 points show, yeah, get 100 what you points. Get is 100 points. Yeah. yeah. Where else can you get 100 points but on the 100 point show? Yeah. Nowhere. It doesn't exist. <laughs> More valuable than gold and dreams combined. Well, except for the real 100-point show that we did for the 5K special. Yes. On that one, you could get 100 points. Yeah, and if you got 100 points, you would win a T-shirt. But yeah. we have already have T-shirts. Well, yeah, but either way. Uh, you guys are uh, not going to compete We're not. We're not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, today we are covering ch uh, Joshua chapters 10 through 13. Now, I wanted Landon here for this one because in chapter 10, the sun stands still and Landon is an astronomer. And I was uh, chatting with him yesterday, so uh, I think he's, uh, he has some apologetic stuff prepared that we're going to talk about. Well, then it only makes sense that Landon should read chapter yes, 10. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, chapter 10. Now, it came about when Adonisak, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had captured Ai the, and utterly destroyed it, it had, as, just as he has done to Jericho and its king, so he had done to Ai and, and its king. And that the inhabitants of Gibbon had made peace with Israel and were within their land. That he feared greatly because Gibbon was a great city and like, like one of the royal cities. And because it was greater than Ai and its men were mighty. So, mighty so uh, before we go further, I do want to point this out. When it's talking about... Uh, these other people being in their land with them, uh, it is referring to actually a, at this time, it would have been like almost 200 years in the past, but uh, it would have been, uh, when, when the Assyrians decided to take over, and like the Babylonians exiled them, but the Assyrians just threw a bunch of their people into the land. So they were all kind of living there together. Uh, a yeah. melting pot, if you will. Uh, so that's kind of what that became. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is in reference to the people still living there. Right. And yeah. with the Gibeonites um, that we covered in Chapter 9, when they became servants of the people of Israel in exchange for not being killed. Um, so obviously they would be the front line. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but of course he also did a little bit of tricking and pretended like they were, uh, you know, coming from afar and and da 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 and trick mm. Joshua into thinking that they just kind of arrived and uh, and uh, yeah. So, but he, being a person of his word, uh, let them become slaves. Yep. <laughs> anyway, let them. Um, <laughs> so so and all his men were mighty. In, in verse three. Therefore, Adonijah of Jerusalem sent word to Oham, king of Hebron, and Piram, king of Jarmuth, and to Jaffa, king of Lachish, and Dibur, king of Elon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us attack Gibbon, and make, for it has made peace with Joshua and the sons of Israel. So the five kings, the Adamites, uh, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, king of Lachish, the king of Elon, gathered together and went up. And they, with their armies, and camped by Gibbon and fought against it. Then the men of Gibbon sent word to Joshua to the camp and to the camp Gigal, saying, 
do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For the kings of the Amorites that live in the hill country have assembled against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all his people of war with, with them, all the valiant warriors. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them. For I have given them into your hands. Not one of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly by marching all night from Gilgal. So he marched all night from Gilgal from there. Um, and the Lord confounded them before Israel, and he slew them with a great slaughter at Gibron and pursued them all the way to the ancient Beth Haron. And struck them as far as Azekah and Mak Maketa. Yeah, M Maketa. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. I'm not sure where all these places are, uh, but I am sure that it was very, it was very quick about this slaughter. Uh, it was so it was a god that. Uh, yeah, God threw them into a panic before Israel. Yeah, God, God came and slew them. Yeah. Um, now, in chapter 9, uh, they mention, chapter 9, verse 1, that the kings on this side, Jordan, in the hills, in the valleys, uh, got together uh, to fight against Joshua. And they mention the uh, Hittites, uh, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Uh, it looks like this is either people are, who are contained within those groups or literally a different group of kings who are also getting together. It, it, what it seems like, uh, I'm not actually sure about uh, Eglon, <laughs> but uh, the rest, actually, or Jarmuth either, but the rest of these were actually really... Uh, big cities uh well not really big but like fairly big i mean it uh, says that they're the five kings of the amorites in 10 5 at least in my version the king james version uh which you can look at a video yeah, yeah, the, that the five kings of the made. amorites yeah yeah uh so these are the amorites and they are one of the groups of kingdoms sure. that are banding together so yeah. apparently they haven't all banded together at this point, even though chapter 9 would suggest that's the case. Speaking of uh, the King James Version, mm -hmm. I have the English Standard Version. Yes. <laughs> um, and I have the New American Standard. Okay. All right. So, um, and, and as David Sisko said, yes, the Hittites were actually a massive civilization. They were. Um, they were fucking huge. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Uh, they had pretty good archaeological finds talking about um, some of the stuff and the metalwork that they used yeah. to do. Anyway, so... Yeah, and they existed 11. for quite a while, too. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, I'm not sure about the, the earliest finds from them, but uh, I know that for a fact they participated in the Libyan War uh, uh, during... I forget it was, if it was Ramses III, I think, or Merneptah, sure. I forget... But uh, they did participate in that war. Mm. Well, anyway, that's all I have on that. <laughs> we are, so, um, verse 11. And it came about that they fled before Israel while they were at the descent of Beth Horam. And the Lord threw large stones from heaven on them. So... So, like, he had a meteor shower or something? or they Something had a bunch like of, that. Of, something like that. Of course... Of course one might say, well, where are the craters that those stones would have formed? And where is the uh, your impact items? Because if, if, if there are large stones, I assume it's not just like some volcano went push, but like it came down from heaven. Like kind of like so, boulders or something. Yeah. yeah and, and, and if they, if they, it was a dense enough that they should have, you know, that they killed them, right? Not just one stone with stones because of multiple people, then there should actually be, you know, meteors. Um, on the ground in that area, there should be maybe even craters and so forth, the result of this. But really likes to mine meteors. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I go down to uh, this location, see, in Antarctica, to look for meteorites in the ice. Antarctica. Oh. I just hear that's an ice wall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a land way down under. Um, yeah. but, but it is interesting that they, they say large stones. So, so some people say, well, actually, no, it was hailstones. But, but, but it does say large stones. On the other hand, it says, um, and they died. And therefore, more who died from hailstones than from whom the sons of Israel killed by the sword. So, one it says stones, the other thing it says hailstones. What do your translations say, by the way? Mine says uh, great stones and then hailstones. Yeah, I have uh, there were more who died because of the hailstones than the sons of Israel killed with the sword. Uh, so, yeah, I guess they do say it was hailstones but uh, it, there's no way like how big i don't even know how big it's possible like it's a historically the largest piece of hail was the size of an suv was that just one piece or was yes, that a... one piece that fused, there was a bunch of them fused together that fell in one okay solid chunk. all right bunch of them fused oh. together uh I mean, but but is it stones or the hailstones or are they well okay let's let's just say for now if it's hailstones how many of these, of super giant hailstones, uh, could fall. Like, how many SUV-sized hailstones could fall how during a hailstorm? How many hailstones fall in the desert? Well, okay, so actually, in this area, nothing. But in but, like in but northern Israel, it does Israel, say so. large stones. And I think it said large stones from heaven. Uh, so. Yeah, I also have large stones from heaven. But, I mean, to them, that probably just meant the sky. It depends on the author, really. Because if we're going with the Noah author... Uh, This would have been uh, a Deuteronomist. Mm. So, we're not going with the Noah author. No, no, no. no. All right. Well, then, yeah, it's probably just the sky. So, either they're meteors or they're hail. Either way, it's unnatural for the area. Yeah. So God either threw rocks or chunks of ice or some combination of the two and killed more of them. A rocky avalanche. I don't think they would describe that as from heaven. A rocky avalanche from heaven? That's on top of the mountain. Maybe it is just hail. Hail stones. Anyway, all right. So chapter uh, chapter 10, verse 12. Yeah. Then Joshua spoke. To the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the sons of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, O sun, stand still at Gibbon, O moon, in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation avenged itself themselves um, of their enemy. Now here they get this is getting this is actually getting quite silly, right? Because yeah, you know, so so here's this dude and he says, you know, son, stay there. And and, and even it's interesting it says stand still um and give on and the moon over in this valley. So I guess I guess you have to say some people say that if they're literally they're saying that the, the, the moon moved over to this valley and the sun moved to the valley and stood there. Um but but the apologetics that you get from this this thing is quite amazing. Some of the some of the Christian apologetics, what they will do is they'll say, well, you know, what happened here was they talk about this like NASA has this computer and they were computing the days and the computer stopped and couldn't figure out what to do and therefore that's because this this day of so called that was two days long um, uh, supposedly occurred. And of course. That's 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 other BS. I, I was re, uh, watching online about this preacher saying, well, you know, if you calculate from going backwards, you get to a Tuesday. If you calculate going forward to this day, you get to a Wednesday. So therefore, the day was two days long. Um, <laughs> you know, other things they say is, well, they say, well, it isn't the sun and the moon. So you say, we know the Earth turns on its axis, so the Earth stopped. But if you stop the Earth and its momentum, a couple of things happen. I mean, the inertial forces will cause significant heating within the uh, within the earth right the the core spitting and so forth will will cause friction you'll get all kinds of volcanoes the the, the crust will melt 
um, or and also to the things that are moving along on on the, the whether it's been around the earth all of a sudden stop so they'll basically start flying over the the, the, the ocean momentum of the oceans and the wind will start to uh, you know uh, push along and so you get these giant you get this giant files you know firestorm and uh, you know oceans washing and so forth now other people say well there's probably it was a miracle and God kind of suspended time. Of course, if you spend a time, then how did Israel have the time to go out and kill all those people? Um, right. <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, but it, it is the case. If you do your calculations, no, there's no lost day. Now, they'll go back and say, well, you know, the Aztecs, they have a legend about, and, the, and they say, what another one that they point to, the, the Mayans have that thing, and the Egyptians have this thing. Um, there is kind of a common fable about people going and stopping time. Um, and I presume that part of this, this thing was to borrow that mythology because they couldn't be live without a, a time stopping myth. I know what comments. Uh, I think that there are two other possibilities that one, they could just be saying um, like a figurative thing, like a blessing, like, the sun is obviously good because it represents the day and the light, which the Lord said is good in Genesis. Um, so by saying the sun should stand over this area, well, they wouldn't really do saying it, blessings on this area. They wouldn't really do it that way because uh, this was written before that. Mm -hmm. Well, also, I mean, it I mean, might there, be there a bit of one-upsmanship from Joshua over the uh, Moses tradition because making the sun and moon stand still and literally commanding what they would have thought of as shooting stars. Yeah, right? I mean, that, that's I definitely mean, a way in... Um, that's definitely, like, more of a Hellenized thing uh, because one of the... One of the ways uh, that you could portray, you know, divine power or uh, any kind of divine right. It's really. literally extraterrestrial. It, it's yeah. literally controlling the weather or, in this case, uh, the sun and moon, which is pretty big. Mm -hmm. So uh, I actually pulled something up on this. Uh, I didn't oh. actually have much in the realm of the sun standing still. But what I did have was uh, about this little... Uh, this kind of little poem that we have in here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, his uh, his command. Oh yeah, the, uh, the, the O sun stands still, give on the O moon, the valley of Ajalon. Yeah, 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 that one. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, this is from uh, John Van Setter's. Uh, I forget which book this was in. I should have fucking wrote that down. I think it was historiography, uh, in the ancient world or something. Uh, Searching for Biblical History. I forget the actual fucking name. Uh, he, he's written like a bunch of books. Uh, the story of Joshua's defeat of the Southern Coalition in Chapter 10 presents no great problems. It continues on, it continues on from Chapter 9 Ooh. and uh, clearly presupposes the events here. The one interruption in the narrative is the unit about the sun standing still along with a short poem in it, or, or, along with a short poem in it said to have been derived from the Book of Jasher. And we kind of get that right after the yeah, poem. Yeah, because because I, I should point out, um, if I read up to the verse, it says, Is it not written in the Book of Jasher that the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day? So what is the Book of Jasher? Well, let's see here. Uh, since Deuteronomy, again, quotes from this source in Second Samuel, and when he says Deuteronomy, it's just DTR, so the Deuteronomist. In 2 Samuel uh, ch uh, chapter 1, verse 18. Yes. Uh, the verses in Joshua 10, 12 through 14 are probably from uh, DTR also. The reference in verse 15, uh, we'll get to that. Actually, we should read that first. So let's... Uh... The 2 Samuel uh, chapter 1, verse 18, and... Um... He and he he told them to teach to the sons of Judah the song of the bow. Behold, behold, behold I guess. 
It is written in the book of Joshua. Yeah, okay, so another reference to the book of Joshua. Um, so let's, uh, let's finish, let's go through 15 here. Uh, right. So as I said, as, 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 uh, let me, let me do, let me do this paragraph again, starting from verse 12. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the sons of Israel. And he, in the sight of Israel said, O sun, stand still at Gibbon, O an O moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, the moon stopped until the nation avenged themselves on their enemies. It is not is it not written in the book of Joshua? And the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. And there was no day like it before it or after it, when the Lord listened to the voice of a man, for the Lord uh, fought for Israel. And Joshua and all of Israel with him returned to the camp at Gilgal. So uh, this is what I can note here. I actually found something pretty interesting on this. Um, so the reference in verse 15 to Joshua's return to the camp is clearly out of place uh, since the pursuit of the enemy is still in progress. The flight of the kings in verses uh, 16, so the continuing ones, uh, yeah. really follows closely from verse 10. For the rest, there is no reason to see any other hand in the work. So, uh, this section here is a bit out of place, but it seems to be from the same person. So, what do we know about this book of Joshua? Uh, well, this was part of the Deuteronomistic history, and just like the other books in the history, uh, it had its initial conception uh, probably before the Babylonian exile, and then... Uh, some redactions during the exile, and redactions later, and then probably in uh, like post-exile, and then further like little here and there redactions, uh, like when we have all of these coming together. So, okay, so the the thing is, since they think that this was written by Joshua, of course it's a forgery but uh, it doesn't actually say that it was written by Joshua. So the oh. book of Joshua, or the book of the upright, or the book of the just man, is an unknown book mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. The translation book of the just man is the traditional Greek and Latin translation, while the translation form Joshua is found in the King James Bible. Also, there are two things. Uh, the Book of Joshua, the pseudo Joshua, is an 18th century literary forgery which purports to be an English translation of the Book of Joshua. And the Sefer Hayashar, which is a midrash, uh, a Hebrew midrash also known as the Book of Joshua, named after the lost book of Joshua. Okay. So basically, we have no idea what it actually now, is. Now, now yeah. in, in the chat, one person, uh, David Cisco, says that Joshua is a Septuagint but the Christian banned it. And Nota says that Joshua is an ancient book of war songs. Well, that would make sense that it would be an ancient uh, book of war songs. Because it's referenced during wartime. During wartime. And uh, at this time, he, Yahweh would still be seen as predominantly a war god. A war god. Yeah. A volcano yeah. war god. No. Okay, no. Now, you know, in in this in this area, you know, a lot of times some apologists say, you know, apologists say, well, actually, it's not really the sun and the moon standing still. This is poetic license, and you know, God actually knew the Earth was spinning. Blah 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 blah. Um, others talk about this, you know, NASA or astronomers calculate and find a missing day and correlate it with other ancient traditions. Blah blah blah. Um, it really is quite, it is really quite r ridiculous. So some. Some people go and try to save the God's word by saying, well, this is just a metaphor. Right. And I not mean, not to be I, taken literally when it becomes too inconvenient. I mean, I think it's absolutely, uh, I think most of this book so far that we've read, uh, yeah, most of it, uh, sh it should be seen as allegory. Or uh, this, I guess we could call it, 
historical fiction, and I use well, I, I, I use I, that term loosely because it was just kind of the nation's history, but they were kind of making it up. I think it's more of a theological jab at the surrounding nations, like India and uh, Egypt, where astrology was still a major part of their thing, and they respect astrologers throughout these entire books. They do. Um, yeah. So when they first command stones from the sky, or stones from heaven, that's uh, obviously a play at controlling the so-called lesser celestial objects, literally that they're smaller than the sun and the moon, yeah. and then controlling the greater celestial objects. I, I think it's just a play, maybe, at uh, saying that they have superior access to astrological forces. Another that would make sense, yeah. Ah, okay. Ah, oh, the the yeah, the, the the sky, blah blah blah. So think, but but also, I should also mention that David Cisco said looked it up in the reference that Joshua is not in the, in the Septuagint. Septuagint's version. That's interesting. Um, okay. so he, I would have that correction there. The other that 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 he put in. Um, there's also questions about, about verse 14 that I think also is is a of no. Again, verse 14 says, and therefore there was no day like that before it or after it when the lord listened to the voice of a man for the lord fought for israel now there's been some places there's a reference to the concept of prayer versus a poem i mean does your verse does your editions talk about it in terms of of listen to a voice of man or prayer or mine says uh hearken unto the voice of a man I, yeah voice well, of a man i think i think it's like figurative that uh, there's been no one since Joshua who had such great control of these astrological forces. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, when the Lord heeded the voice of a man. Uh, so I think that uh, this is kind of, you know, putting Joshua in the same league as uh, Abraham and Moses. Well, People who... Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, in the, in the, I mean, in the same league as in, uh, you, know, you know how they talked to God and was it they were able to convince him of things well it's also a propaganda piece because we have to remember that Joshua oh, yeah, is by all means a warlord yeah. and for a warlord having unquestioned loyalty from your yeah like is like what was good. it in chapter one or two where it was like we'll kill for you if anyone disagrees with you yeah and <laughs> here it's literally saying that even God takes commands from Joshua yeah wow yeah now now, if you talk about in terms of, of, of that this might be, an, and then someone inserted these uh, verses into the narrative. Well, the, the, I guess the you're return. suggesting the narrative went from verse 10 and resumes at verse 16? Uh, yeah. So the verse 11 is part of the insertion of, you know, so the hailstones and the, yeah. and the stopping and so yeah. forth. And so what you have is that, you know, struck them down, uh, that, that, that he went and pursued them, um, instruct him down as far as Azaka and, and Mar Makita. Uh, um, so, yeah, so I guess we're continuing on verse okay. sixteen. Otherwise, yeah. we'll never yeah. finish this Bible. Although, are we? <laughs> um, hold, hold on, I, I hear that we are getting that we are having technical issues. What's that? Uh, someone says that it sounds like a plague of crickets. Uh, I think we can. Hold on. I hear that as well. I mean, I hear that, but it I, might we be can, coming from the, the, um, the speaker, the amp. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll. It, I'll add it on my audio board, guys. Okay. It it it, 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 it could be a, a plague of the Lord uh, for us. I'll turn it down a bit. Of the sun it's standing fine. still. But yeah. I'll turn it down a little. By bit. the way, it's standing still over a, you know, like like over a valley and the moon over a valley, but someone. At a different part of the world, obviously, it's not standing still over that valley, right? Yeah. The moon well, is going to stand still, the still over the valley of Ajalon for somebody sitting in Cairo or sitting in uh, ancient, um, you know, for example, in, in the, 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 the Mayan, ancient Mayan city or so forth. So 
they're kind of doing a little flat earther here and saying, you know, the, you got this flat earth and the moon standing right over this valley, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, let's, uh, so, let's uh, continue here. Yeah. All right. So now, uh, verse 16. Now the five kings had fled and hidden themselves in the cave at uh, Mechadah. And, and it was... And it was Josh, and and it was told Joshua saying, "The five kings have been found hidden in the cave at Makeda." So Joshua said, "Roll large stones against the mouth of the cave, and assign men um, by by it to guard them. But do not stay. Um, but do not stay there yourselves. Pursue your enemies. Attack them." in the rear do not allow them to enter the cities uh, for the lord your god has delivered them into your hand now it came about when joshua the sons of israel had finished slaying them uh, and they had a very great slaughter until they had destroyed and this yeah they're, they're until they were destroyed and the survivors who remained of them had entered the fortified cities and that the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Mecca in in peace. No one uttered a word against any of the sons of Israel. Yes, then Joshua now, now said, the sons of Israel are scary. I mean, they wow. were kind of already scary before. That's much so, better, Chris. No one. So no one had uttered or or sharpened his tongue a word against the sons of Israel. Then Joshua said, open the mouth of the cave and bring these five kings out to me from the cave. And they did so and brought the five kings out to him from the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmoth, the king of Lachish, and the king of, of Eglon. And it came about when they brought these kings out to Joshua, Joshua called to all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs and the men of war who had gone before them, come near and put your feet on the necks of these kings. So they came near and put their feet on their necks. And then Joshua said to them, do not fear, do not be dismayed. I would think I'd be fearful, dismayed if I were one of the kings, but okay. <laughs> um, be strong and courageous for the Lord will do um, to all your enemies whom, um, whom you have fought. So afterwards, Joshua struck them and put them to death, and he hanged them on five trees, and they hung on those trees until evening. And it came about at sunset that Joshua commanded, and they took them down from the trees and drew them into a cave where they had hidden themselves and put a large stone over the mouth of that cave to this very day. So I guess they're saying that there's a cave with five dudes inside that they've got a rock in front of. Yeah, and yeah. I, I also want to point out this whole uh, hanging on a tree thing. Uh, obviously, this is uh, paralleled in the uh, in the crucifixion, you know, because he he does kind of get hung on a tree, like on a post or something. Uh, but at least when uh, from patristic evidence we see that they kind of saw, you know, a, a tree in the, the crucifix as, you know, based, pretty, pretty similar, right? Uh, so this, uh, I think it was in one of Paul's letters, uh, Paul was discussing that, like, it's an ab not an abomination, but it's, it's really bad if you're hung up on a tree. So, uh, and I think yeah. there was a, a, I can't remember who it is. I think I actually go over it in my Marcion video. Uh, but this this hanging from a tree imagery is also very common in the Bible. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very disrespectful way to kill someone. Yes. It is, yeah. And, and I, assume, I assume, by the way, that, that, that there's been no um, reported finding of this cave with five, five kings inside it. Well, there may have been a reported finding, but like reported in a, with quotes. Um, 
may have been reported, but we do know that at least there were a lot of medieval forgeries. So if I, if I just had to take a guess, if they ever found this cave, it would be during uh, the medieval period. Okay. That's just a guess. So, so in verse 28, it says, Now Joshua ca captured Makeda on that day and, and struck it and the king and, and its king to the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed it uh, and every person who was in it. He left no survivor. Thus he did to the king of Makeda just as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all of Israel um, with him passed in, uh, passed on from Mecca to um, Lebna and fought against Libna. And the Lord gave it also with its king unto the hands of Israel. And he struck it and every person who was with, was within it to the edge of the sword. He left no survivor in it. Thus he did to the king, just as he had done to the king of Jericho. And Joshua and all of Israel with him passed on from Lebanon to Lachish, and they camped by it and fought against it. And the Lord gave Lachish into the hands of Israel, and he captured it on the second day and struck it and every person who was in it with the edge of the sword, according to all that he had done to Lebanon. So if they're counting the days, <coughs> then obviously at this point, the sun is moving. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. remember in, in, in verse um, 14, it's actually it was verse Verse 13, it says, and it did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. So implying that it, it's, it's moving again. Mm -hmm. But how do they measure a day? Uh, with their super advanced clocks. <laughs> that they had and, back then. Yeah, their atomic well, clocks. Obviously, they're, they're seeing that, that the sun and the moon were hovering over these two spots, and they stayed there uh, and then started going around again, according to... Uh, Ah, yes. They're, they're heliocentric, or no, non-heliocentric, uh, geocentric models of, of things. Um, anyway, as I say, but, but um, so, so, so we're talking about, you know, it, it, he keeps coming back and basically doing to these, these places, um, like he just did it to, to, um, if you were in verse, what, we were in verse 32? Uh, 32, yeah. 33. Um, then Haram, the king of Geshur, came up to help Lachish, and Joshua uh, defeated him and his people until he had left no survivor. And Joshua and all of Israel with him passed on from Lachish to Eglon, and they camped by it and fought against it. And they captured it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword, and they utterly destroyed that Day, every person who was in it, according to all that had been done to Lachish. Lachish, or is that is that Lachi? You know, I I don't know. I have been I've been trying to figure that out for a while. I should really just look up how to pronounce that. Lachish. I think it's Lachish. Lachish. Okay. Um, then uh, Joshua and all of Israel went up uh, from Eglon to Hebron, and they fought against it. And they camped by it and struck it and the king with all the cities and all the persons who were in it to the with the edge of the sword. And they left no survivors according to all that had been done to Eglon. And they utterly destroyed it, every person who was within it. Then Joshua and Alvazil went with him and returned to Jebar and they fought against it. And they captured it and its king and all of its cities and they struck it with the edge of the sword, and they utterly destroyed it, every person who was in it, and left no survivor, just as he had done to Hebron, so they did to Debar, uh, Debar the, and its king, and he also had done to Lebanon and its king. And thus Joshua struck all the land, the hill country and the Negev, and the lowland and the slopes and all their kings, he left no survivor, but utterly destroyed all who 
who breathe, just as the Lord, the God of Israel, had commanded. And Joshua struck them from Kadesh Bar Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh? Kadesh Barnea. Barnea, even as far as um, Gaza in the country of, of Gashin, even as far as Giva. Wow, they had problems in Gaza all the way back then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Joshua commanded all that all these kings and all their lands at one time because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. So Joshua and all of Israel returned to the camp at Gilgal. Wow. So that's... So if you notice, if, if we, if we uh, take this without the scholarship, uh, he returns to the camp at verse 15 and verse 43. Hmm. Yeah, so so hmm. this was added, the verse 15 was 100% added later, uh, and the verse, uh, the, the whole stopping of the sun is, uh, that's, I guess, that's a bit more debatable. It might be a poetic device, too, because it could they be, are, yeah. 43 and 15 are literally the exact same verse. Yeah. Uh, so so could, it, could it be that they came back, and then the kings hid themselves, and then we came out again? I mean, that, more that's, stuff. that is kind of like how, how they describe it, but that is not how anything was ever written. Uh, thank you, yes, Anti-Social Socialist. And just hey. in time for us to end Chapter 10, uh, if you're enjoying the stream so far, give it a like. That really helps us out. And share it around like with that your friends, thumbs family. Thumbs up button, maybe? Yeah, thumbs yeah, up Thumbs button. up. And... Uh, you know, share it around friends, family, neighbors, ex-girlfriends, estranged children, etc. Hail um, Sagan, he says. And but 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 yes, please do so and support or become a patron, all that good stuff too. Yeah, yeah. That, that really does help us. I said off. But, but it really is. It really is sort of this notion that they killed everyone um, in these in these cities. Of course, these cities. I guess. Some of these seas are still with us today, and some of them are 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 destroyed. I, pre I presume. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There, there are uh, definitely uh, areas that we kind of know, like what they are now. Mm -hmm. um, like Goshen, I think was. I could be totally wrong, but I think it was like a western region of Israel. Yeah. Oh, thank you, DB Cisco. Thank you, DB Cisco. Tithing for your tithing for our congregation. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, and and of course, you know, Gaza is certainly is an area. I believe also. I believe that Hebron is is an area as well. To, that to this day. But um, again, it's noted that basically Joshua went through and basically killed everyone and and didn't let anyone left no mercy because the Lord their God commanded them to smite them. Utterly. Yeah, and if you recall. Uh, the other destructions before these five Amorite kings, uh, those were pr like at least a little bit more detailed on the destructions. Like you saw strategies, you know, like the strategy where they ran away. That yeah. was a good one. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I think there was one before that as well. Uh, Sound. Yeah, oh. that's right. That's right. They they shouted. But yeah, there, there was. This was so much more minimalistic. A lot more minimalistic. Yeah. But I think um, ver uh, chapter ten is a good example of what will happen if the ultra orthodox uh, Jewish political groups gain control over Israel, <laughs> uh, which is not a good thing. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Especially for those people that aren't uh, as orthodox as they are. Yeah. Oh, man. I've heard uh, people literally having rocks thrown at their cars driving around oh, in Israel yeah. on Shabbat. Um, yeah. But anyways, chapter 11, I guess I'll read it. Yeah. Yeah. And and while you do that, I'm going to go grab a Mountain Dew. Oh, well, have fun. I guess I could get you a Mountain Dew, Chris. 
All right, well, chapter 11. And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, had heard of those things, that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon. To Jobab. Jobab, yeah. And Jobab. to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Akshaf, and to the kings that were in the north of the mountains, and in the plain south of Chinaroth, and in the valley, and in the borders of Dor on the west, and to the Canaanite on the east and the west, and to the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite, and in the mountains, and to the Hivite under uh, Hermon in the land of Mizpah. I don't know why he would call to the Amorites, given that we just saw them Destroyed get Destroyed them all, yeah, pretty much. Maybe, um, they were, maybe they were cousins out in the... The countryside. <laughs> yeah. Having a vacation. Uh, extended family. Yeah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, much people, uh, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots, very many. So, in case you didn't get it, there are a lot of them. Yeah. And when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them, for tomorrow, about this time, will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. Thou shalt hoe their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Merom suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them in the hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto great Zidon, and unto Misrephoth Maim, and mm. unto the valley of Mizpah eastward. And they smote them until they left none of them remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. He hoed their horses, and or howled, and burnt their chariots with fire. And Joshua at that time turned back and took Hazor and smote the king thereof with the sword. For Hazor before time was the head of all those kingdoms. And they smote all the souls that were therein with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe, and he burnt Hazor with fire. And all the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Joshua take and smote them with the edge of the sword, and he utterly destroyed but them. But he did. Did he devote them to destruction? Well, he utterly destroyed them. Okay. Utterly destroying those udders. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. Ah. Ooh, interesting. So. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. Now I don't know uh, if this is a, a redaction thing or if the tradition of Moses was like. He wants us to kill people too. I mean, which would make sense. Well, with, Deuteronomy with the bigger stories. did have like long speeches about like going <laughs> off and murdering a whole bunch yeah. of people. Uh, but as for the cities that stood still in their strength, Israel buried none of them, save Hazar only. That did Joshua burn, and all the spoils of these cities, and the cattle the children of Israel took for a prey unto themselves. But every man they smote with the edge of the sword until they had destroyed them, neither left they any to breathe. As the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hills, and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen, and the valley, and the plain, and the mountain of Israel, and the valley of the same, even from the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir unto Baal, Baal God in the valley of Lebanon under the Mount Hermon, or Hermon. And all their kings he took and smote them and slew them. Okay, and then it starts to change from there on. So any comments on uh, that? Uh, well, I, I have one short comment here. Uh, so we we kind of see their 
the the bias against the Amorites because it specifically uh, lists out these kings of the Amorites uh, that they don't like, and it goes one by one, it kills them all. But this it seems more uh, more vague. Mm -hmm. uh, it it doesn't like the at least the titles for the sections here. I think that alone kind of shows that there's five Amorite kings executed, and then conquest of southern Canaan, and then conquest of northern Canaan. Mm. Yeah. So I, mean, it, I guess in verse 16, we're talking about you know, the, the Negev, which is, which is, I guess, the south country. Yep, that's the area, south so. that's not That's not Judah. It's south of Judah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. There is not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. All other they took in battle. For it was the Lord, for it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, that he may destroy them utterly, and that they may have no favor, but that he may destroy them as the Lord commanded Moses. So, so, so this is... This... Calling back to... Uh, the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh, what's, this is actually something else I pulled up. Uh, I think it was on the same page as the other thing. <sighs> y yes? No? Did I take note of that too? I don't know if I did. Uh, oh. No, I don't think I did. Okay. Well, either way, uh, it's obviously... Uh, so this was written before the, the whole story about the Pharaoh, but this, this seems to be a way God wins over. Like the, this, uh, this is how God wins wars. He hardens their hearts. So then they're weaker. That makes them weaker, I guess. Their, 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 their free will has been tampered with. Uh, well, it means maybe that, like that they wouldn't surrender. It was only... The so then they would all die. So that would, yeah. 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 So it makes sense as... Uh, you don't, no, it still doesn't. None of this makes sense. But uh, so, well, so God, God like, has a strategy against people he created. He could kill them all outright, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to harden their hearts so then they fight to their inevitable death. Well, let's, let's talk about some Christian apologetics here. Um, okay. Do these people go to hell or shoal? Probably. But they had no free will. Right. Right. So God doesn't care what your choice is. The apolo God makes you go to hell. The apolo well, yes, he does send people to hell. Uh, I think Matt Dillahunty had a great thing about that. Have you seen it? No. Okay, well, basically this woman called in and uh, she, he, he and Jeff D., say that they're not sending themselves to hell. God is sending them to hell. Uh, and they're like, and she's like, no, 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 you're sending yourselves to hell. And then Matt constructs this argument. He's like, did God create hell? Yes. Did your God create the rules by which souls are judged? Yes. Does anything happen that does not go according to your God's will? No then your God is responsible for everything, including the people who he sends to hell. And then she was like, that is so messed up. And Matt's response, I love it. He was like, yeah, that logic stuff is a real pain in the ass, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it is kind of interesting that, 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 you know, this narrative, it isn't something like some plague that comes through uh, or, or something. They've got to go out and have people stab and kill, kill folks because... Right, uh, because, you know, God obviously can't just kill people, even though he did it before. Yeah, he's done it a bunch. Of, oh, oh, yeah, he, he said he was never going to do that again. Well, he killed all those firstborn people. Yeah, he did that, Egypt that's true. After no, that. no, that was an angel. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, an angel. That was an angel. <laughs> an angel of the Lord. Couldn't, now, I know now, this couldn't, couldn't God and have, like, softened their hearts and said, hey, why don't you move up north so... So these people can come in and take over your land. I he could have not have He could have made them do whatever, but he no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know. 
I know it isn't in the Bible, but in the book of Maccabees, uh, God literally sends an angel with a flaming sword. That's in this one. No, it isn't. It isn't? No. The book of Maccabees is not in any of the canons, even though it's the fundamental basis of Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh. he literally sends an angel with a flaming sword in the book of Maccabees to be a general for the armies. And I don't see why he wouldn't do anything similar to that in this situation if he wanted all these people to be destroyed. Right. <laughs> Anyways, and at that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakim from the mountains, from Hebron to Deber, from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel. Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakim left in the land of the children of Israel, only in Gaza, in Gath and in Ashdod there remained. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes. And the land rested from war. And that's so, the end of so the chapter. If you're liking the stream so far, give it a like, share it around, uh, buy our t-shirts on Teespring, you know, all that fun stuff. All that good stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I see... Oh, this I, is right not now, the pod racing Attican. Right now, I see 18 viewers. Now, we were up at, like, almost 25 or something. Yeah. Uh, but I see 18 viewers right now. I should see 18 likes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways. Uh, let's jump into chapter uh, 12. Yep. But, actually, before chapter 12, uh, I kind of want to do, like, some exposition on this. So, you have them actually gaining the land mm -hmm. and then it says that they're going to separate it based on the tribes yeah uh at this point the tribes were already there it was already all divided uh this is just kind of like here's the story of here's how you know we got this land and then here's how we divided uh yeah divided it uh so it's and obviously, this wasn't like, it wasn't an eyewitness. This was written 400 years after it supposedly happened. Uh, maybe a little less. Could but, you imagine, like, if this happened? Today? Let's say that you've got the Middle East. And uh, Israel just decided, we're going to go on a war campaign and burn all of their cities to the ground and kill everything and take the spoils for ourselves except for those times when we just destroy everything utterly sure. like we devote them to destruction how <laughs> now obviously a lot of people believe in this book and they think that god is good uh how could that be justified in a modern setting and if it can't be justified in a modern setting then why did they justify it in this setting? Well, obviously, morality has... Uh, well, I, th I think that it was never okay to do this. Right. But, you know, they saw it as okay. I think they were wrong, but... Well, because they, they say, well, God's doing it, so that's okay. Right, right, yeah. God, God done did it. Oh, and uh, I, see, I see the word sitcom in the chat. Uh, remember... At it was a two hundred or three hundred dollars a month, we no at two hundred, yeah two hundred dollars a month we begin, uh, on Patreon we begin production of our God sitcom. Yes, the God sitcom. Okay. Yeah, that is a that is a big thing. It can help us buy like the like materials for the sets we need, and I think it'd be really really neat. Yeah, yes, I highly recommend becoming a patron. <laughs> You get more stuff. Okay. Anyways. Uh, chapter 12. Now these are the kings of the land whom the people of Israel defeated and took possession of their land beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise from the valley of the Arnon to Mount Hermon with all the Araba eastward. Sion, king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon and ruled from, holy shit, uh, Arawer which is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, 
and from the middle of the valley as far as the river Jabbok. The boundary of the Amorites, that is half of Gilead. And the Araba to the Sea of Chinneroth eastward, and in the direction of Beth Jesimoth to the Sea of the Araba, the Salt Sea, southward to the foot of the slopes of Pishka and Og, king of Bashan. And we kind of went over these guys' stories uh, before. Mm -hmm. So, where am I? Uh, King of Bashan, uh, one of the, yeah, one of the remnant of the Rephaim who lived at Ashtaroth and at Edrai and ruled over Mount Hermon. Mine says at verse four, and the coast of Og, King of Bashan, which yeah, was of the, the remnant of, of the giants. Ooh, of oh, the giants. Yep. The, I, I only remember giants being referenced in uh, before the flood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the remnants of the giants. Well, or maybe. Uh, who lived at Ashtaroth and at Edrai and ruled over Mount Hermon and S Selica and all Bashan to the boundary of the Geshurites and the Makathites and over half of Gilead to the boundary of Sion, king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and all and the people of Israel defeated them. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave their land for a possession to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh. I kind of feel like at this point they shouldn't be referred to as the half tribe. But they keep, but they keep saying the half tribe stuff because it was a half brother. I'm, I'm just trying to. Well, it's kind of like, um, uh, a, like a, a, it's the derogatory term. Uh, like, I, f I forget the which yeah. ones. But Those guys. Yeah, the ones that are a mix of uh, the Israelites. and. So really it's 11 and a half tribes of Israel. Yeah, yeah Manasseh, I guess. Um, <laughs> but anyways, this is about Moses. That entire section was about Moses. Yes. So, but Moses didn't do this. Uh, well, it says that these are the these were the kings defeated by Moses. Uh, At, yeah, keep reading. Yeah. Uh, and these are the kings of the land whom Joshua and the people of Israel defeated on the west uh, side of the Jordan. Oh, from it's a, it's a bigger dick contest. Yeah, bigger dick contest. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, so they're saying they're the first ones were the ones that Moses did on the, this side, and now, yeah, Joshua. Yeah. So I see how yeah. Joshua really is. <laughs> so, uh, and these are the kings of the land whom Joshua and the people of Israel defeated on the west side of the Jordan from Balgad to the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak uh, that arises toward Sair. And Joshua gave their land to the tribes of Israel as a possession according to their allotments in the hill country, in the lowland, in the Araba, in the slopes, in the wilderness, in the Negev, uh, the land of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai, one, which is beside uh, Bethel, one. Uh, one uh, oh, hold on. Yeah, just how many of the kings that they killed. Oh, wow! Of these places. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. The king of oh. Jerusalem won. The king of Hebron won. <laughs> the king of Jarmuth won. The king of La uh, Lahish, or Lachish won. What? The king of Eglon won. The king of Gezer won. The king of Debir won. The king of Geder won. The king of Horma won. The king of Arad won. The king of Libna won. The king of Adullam won. The king of Makeda won. The Is king. There two? No. The king of Bethel ah. won. The king of Tapua won. The king of Hefer won. The king of Afak won. <laughs> Oh, this is quite a ride. Um, the king of Hazar won. The king of Shimron Meron won. The king of uh, Ashaf won. The king of Tanakh, not to be confused with the Tanakh, won. It's Tanakh. Yeah, Tanakh. 
Uh, the Ka. king of Megiddo yeah. won. The king of Kadesh won. The king of Jokniam, I don't even fucking know. Uh, in Carmel won. <laughs> in Carmel, I like that. Mm, delicious. Mm. The king of Dor in uh, Nafat Dor won. Mine says the coast of Dor. Oh, the okay. heights of Dor. Uh, the king of <laughs> the king of Goyim is that right? Mine says the king of the nations of Gilgal. Oh, woo! That's really different. Uh, mine. Although mine has a note. Goyim, Goyim in Gengal. Yeah, Go Go I have Goyim in Galilee, but then I have a note that says Septuagint Hebrew Gilgal. So, all right wow. then. Okay. Uh, one, the king of Tirza. One, in all. 31 kings. Wow. Wow, and that's the end of chapter so, 12. Yeah, but so, I, I think So the I whole have... purpose of chapter 12 was to say Joshua had killed, had more kings killed than Yeah, Moses. it's almost like the Cain and Lamech story. Yeah, right? kind of, yeah. Almost. Uh, I think I actually uh, have something on this, like this list. I could swear that I saw this. Uh, what was this? This was chapter 12? Chapter 12. Okay. The list of defeated kings on both sides of the Jordan in chapter 12 does not contain anything that is distinctive of the, Deuteron of the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomistic source. And uh, he says he agrees with this, some other scholar called Moinkle uh, that it is from the hand of P. It could be explained only as corresponding to P's love of lists, which he displays so prominently throughout. Oh, look at that list. Yeah, through, through uh, which he. Um, hold on, wait. What did he say? Which he displays so prominently throughout the Pentateuch. At various points, it does not entirely agree with the previous uh, Deuteronomistic account. So, addition later, Van Setters thinks it's by P, and it disagrees with the previous account. Yeah. Yes, right? yes, yes, the Aaron Priesthood. And they love lists. Love those lists. Yeah. And with that, we're getting into the final chapter of the day, chapter 13. Now, either I can do this or Landon can for do it. it. Go for it. Uh, Go for it. Mm. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you, you Unless know. you really want me to do that. I guess I can do it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> chapter 13. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, you're old. <laughs> yeah. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that remaineth. All the borders of the Philistines, and all the Geshuri, from Sihor, which is before Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron northward, which is counted to the Canaanite, five lords of the Philistines, the Gazathites, and the Ashdothites, and the Eshkelonites, and the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Avites. From the south, all the land of the Canaanites, and Meera, that is beside the Sidonite, Sid. Donians, not Sidonites, and unto Aphek, to the borders of the Amorites, and the land of the Giblites, and all Lebanon toward the sun rising, from Baal God under Mount Hermon, unto the entering into Hamath, and all the inhabitants of the hill country, from Lebanon unto Misrephothmaim. And all wow. the Sidonians, them will I drive out from before the children of Israel. Only divide thou it by lot unto the Israelites for an inheritance as I have commanded thee. Thou now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh. <laughs> with Only whom, nine, and, nine and a half? Yep, nine and a half. With whom, the, well, because they wouldn't count the Aaronid priests. And they wouldn't count the uh, Levites. Yeah, they yeah. certainly would not count the Levites. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with whom the Reubenites and the Gadites have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward, even as Moses the servant of the Lord gave them. 
from Aror, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Medeba unto Diban, and all the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in Heshbon unto the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Geshurites, and Maacathites, and all Mount Hermon, and all Bashan unto Salka, all the kingdom of Og and Bashan, which remained which reigned in Ashtaroth and in Adrei, who remained in the remnant of the giants. For these did Moses smite and cast them out. Nevertheless, the children of Israel expelled not the Geshurites nor the Maacathites, but the Geshurites and the Maacathites dwell among the Israelites until this day. Only unto the tribe of Levi he gave none inheritance, by the sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by fire are their inheritance, as said as he said unto them. So and, so you got two tribes that are on the other side, and you got nine and a half on this side, and the Levites they yeah. get temple offerings. Right. And Moses gave unto the tribe of the children of Reuben inheritance according to their family. And their coast was from Aror, that is on the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain by Medeba, Heshbon, and all her cities that are in the plain, Diban, and Bath Mobaal, and Beth Baal Me'an, and Jahaza, and Kedemoth, and Mephathath, and Kirjatham, and Sibma, and Zareth Shahar in the mount of the valley, and Beth Peor and Ashdoth Pisgah, and Beth Jeshimoth, and all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which, re which reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses smote with the princes of Midian, Evi, and Rechem, and Zor, and Hor, and Reba, which were dukes of Sihon, dwelling in the country. Balaam, also the son of Beor. And we have already met Balaam. Yeah. 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 No, this is Balaam. Yeah, that's the same guy. Balaam. Is it? Yeah, son, son of Beor. Huh. No, this is son of Beor. Oh, shit. Okay, let's, yeah. look, maybe. Let's find out. Yeah. Go look at, look at the, the one who practiced the divination. The soothsayer did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. Okay, I think it's so the same the, guy, yeah. This is the same guy. Yeah. And the border of the children of Reuben was Jordan, and the border thereof. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben, after their families, the cities, and the villages thereof. And Moses gave inheritance unto the tribe of Gad, even unto the children of Gad, according to their families. And their coast with Jazer, and all the cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Ammon, unto Aroer, that is before Rabbah. And from Heshbon unto Ramath Mizpeh and Betanim, and from Mahanaim unto the border of Debir. And in the valley Beth Aram and Beth Nimra and Sukoth and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Sihon, king of Heshbon, Jordan, and his border, even unto the edge of the Sea of Chinnereth on, on the other side, Jordan eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of Gad after their families, the cities, and their villages. And Moses gave inheritance unto the half-tribe of Manasseh. What a nice guy. And this was Whoa, the possession nice. of the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh by their families. And their coast was from Manaim, al-Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan, threescore cities. And half Gilead and Ashtaroth and Adrei, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan, were pertaining unto the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, even unto one half the children of Machir by their families. These are the countries which Moses did distribute for inheritance in the plains of Moab, on the other side, Jordan, by Jericho, eastward. But unto the tribe of Levi, Moses gave not any inheritance. The Lord God of Israel was their inheritance. 
as he said unto them. <laughs> and, uh, I, I love how they get nothing, but it's it's always like, but no, but you get God. God is, yeah, yeah like you're with him. Yeah. He, he, Congratulations. His undying yes. love goes to you. Yep. And yep. it looks like next week's episode is going to be a lot more of that. Yeah. So next week's episode, it's uh, we were kind of looking over this uh, before the show. And it seems like chapters 14 through 19 uh, are all about inheritance. Very listy. For every single tribe. Uh, so I kind of think that this was a later edition. Mm. I think it was actually an exilic edition. Because if huh. you just got kicked out of your land, wouldn't you want to remember... Like, what lands what, you should have? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I'm not, like, a pro at this, so I have no idea. <laughs> but that's just um, a thought, I guess. Uh, I'm sure that's already... I'm sure it's derivative. <laughs> Once we're done with Joshua, we should make a map of the inheritance. Oh. Or we should find a map. Yeah, we can find a map, yeah. You know what? So, Next time, the background picture should be. Oh, that's a good idea. Of that's the inheritance. Yeah. yeah. So, are there people in Israel today saying, "Well, I'm from this tribe, and therefore this is oh, my land"? Because it's it's very important. There are even like religious rituals where you have to be from specific tribes. I'm not sure if they still claim inheritance to the land. Uh, I could look into it, but uh, the tribal inheritance is still very much a thing yeah and we're not counting the ones that came in the sub over to north america to uh (laughs) oh yeah the cursed ones who became native (laughs) americans yeah yeah that's that's a different book Um, different book but 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 this this next section is going to sort of document the the inheritance um, and I was just curious whether this next section is, is cited by people as saying that's my land and we're going to build territory, you know, settlements there. Because yeah, we can it look into be, yeah. it, and uh, if it is, we'll definitely bring it up. Yeah, but it seems like next week's episode is going to be a bunch of that. But after that, we're going to finish up uh, Joshua. Yeah, and after Joshua, we get into Judges. Judges. Yes. Um, which Judges is a little different. A, a yeah, who is the author of Judges, by the way? They, they were kind of the, the people who uh, ruled, I guess. Uh, who, no, but I mean, who's the author of that? Oh, section, oh, no. You know? uh, so for the most part, it was it'll also be the same guy uh, that wrote uh, the most of Joshua. Okay. Yeah. But after or at least that, we have before. the Book of Ruth, which we should be able to cover in one episode. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Yeah. Book of Ruth, we're just going to fly right through that. Um, With that being said, I hope everyone enjoyed this week's class. Yes, class. Yeah. Uh, Yes. And if you haven't, drop a like since it really helps us out. And remember to check us out on Patreon. Uh, You get good rewards. You could be on the show. Yeah. And uh, follow us. Uh, What? What were you saying? You can win t-shirts, even. Yeah, you can win t-shirts, right. Yeah. Landon is getting every single t-shirt until we have another $10 patron. So until then, he is going to be the only person winning the t-shirts. We're going to have to design more t-shirts just so he doesn't get multiple copies of the same yeah. shirt. <laughs> I've got one. I think it's the beginning of Joshua 13. <laughs> there you the go. The beginning of Joshua 13. What's the exact quote? Oh, uh, now Joshua was old and advanced in years. Oh, yeah. Old and advanced, And the Lord yes. said to him, well, you are I mean, old and advanced in years. Uh, we should make a, a, a birthday card. Yeah, a birthday like card. Like a Hallmark card. <laughs> yes. Happy birthday, Joshua. But, yeah, it's kind of interesting that 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 it sort of kind of implies that, that chapter 13 was much, much later. Because I didn't think that they implied that Joshua in the chapter 10, 11... 12 kill everyone was that old but now they're saying in chapter 13 he is old well i mean how old would he get over the course of uh 
days when the sun stands still? I mean, does he age I, at the same I, rate? I don't know. Probably. That's a good question. He would probably get all dried up. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what struck him. He was very stricken in years because of that. Um, it's the sunburn. Just made him old. Really bad. SPF. And I say, and if you want to, if you want to have a laugh about some of the apologetics around that sun standing still, moon standing still stuff, there's some really, uh, you know, good chucklers out there that try to rationalize all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But but if you hear about stuff about well, astronomers calculated this missing day. No, there's no missing day. <laughs> like, all right. Uh, other than that, I other think, than that, I think we're we're all good. Yeah, MilwaukeeAtheist.com, Facebook and Twitter, all that shit. And next time on Milwaukee Atheist Presents Atheist Sunday School, a Milwaukee Atheist presentation. Hurry up, it's this Sunday. Uh, it will uh, we'll cover 14 through 19. Yeah. Bye-bye.